please put your hands together for our opening keynote, Ms. Karen McCullough. You've got to admit, the world is changing, and it's changing fast. I love you. This is a generation that never heard. So I believe in evolution. I don't believe in revolution. I don't believe in changing everything today. I believe in small changes. I am speaking on my favorite topic, the generations in the workplace. So I opened the conference today and I was really excited. I speak on the generations, but I believe that my topic is more than just understanding the generations. I believe that with technology and with the millennials, which would be the generation born 1980 and after, we have like this marriage of massive change. Everybody gets a trophy, we did that to you. We're sorry about that. Because this is a generation, listen to me, that has changed the workplace. They are more collaborative. They like to share ideas. They want you to care about their future, so they are going to talk to you about where they see themselves in an organization. They don't want to wait five years to be president, or 10, and somewhere they, they want it much sooner. And so we have to begin to listen. This isn't just one or two millennials. This is an entire perception that is coming in and changing everything. There's 80 million of them. We need to attract them. We need to be listening to them, and we need to do things their way, because now it's their time. My purpose is to get the audience open to the changes, to appreciate and respect every generation. Every one of us brings um, knowledge and skills and experiences and give each other a chance, but to realize more than ever that the workplace and the culture is changing. You were the last generation who was allowed to stay out and play until the street lights came on, right? The street lights, you could say, and if you came home early, What'd your baby boomer mother do? She kicked you out of that door and she locked it on you. <laughs> Today I was just sitting with a group and he had his door. He go, oh, there are my kids. Oh, I see. Oh, oh my gosh. They were. We're checking on your kids on our phones. It's, it's creeping me out. <laughs> Today, moms sit outside with their little chair and their glass of wine. You can ride your bike from here to the stop sign and back. Oh, look at them. They're so independent. <laughs> You've got to be a sponge. You've got to learn how to absorb, how to listen, how to look, how to see how things get done. You've got to look and figure out how ideas are communicated before you start to make evaluations. And you have to invest in yourself before you expect us to invest in you. And what does that mean? That means learning products, understanding them, doing your homework at night, maybe volunteering to help with a conference, maybe giving a presentation. You've got to begin to step out of what's expected and do some things that are not expected in order to grow. Times were changing, but they were changing socially. We had a commercial. A frying pan came on the scene. This is your brain. An egg cracks. <laughs> Into the frying pan and a voice comes out and says, this is your brain on drugs. Did it work? I don't know. I'm not looking around here. We try to scare you. We baby boomers thought of that anyway. I love you, Gen X. <laughs> You've got to admit, the world is changing, and it's changing fast. A lot of it is about technology, but you know what? I've been doing this a while, and I think a lot of it is about you, and you, and all of you millennials that are in this room. You are helping make this world a different and a better place, and I thank you for it. Who here remembers their first Walkman? Let me see a show of hands. I gotta look out there, yeah. Oh, remember how excited you were? No more boombox. I, I hate to be negative because I am a motivational speaker, but many of you in here have a little change fatigue. You come in, you're tired. You're sick of these changes, right? Who here is a little bit tired this morning? Oh, maybe it was from partying last night. I'm not sure, right? I especially loved Karen McCullough yesterday, was our closing keynote. She was funny, she was inspiring, she sang, she danced, I and mean, what more could you ask for out of a keynote?
We have the internal customer and we have the external customer. And today when we talk about branding, we talk about employee branding and the power of people in your organization talking positively about work and attracting their friends and the talent to come to the work. So I love what's going on. In 2009, we were afraid of disruptions. Ooh, that's a disruption. Today, CNBC has the list every year of the top 50 disruptors. Everybody wants to be a disruptor. So what does that mean? We look at how we market. We look at what we believe from a different lens. I believe that we all have biases from our experiences, from the way we were raised, from our, our parents, from the times, from technology. You begin to look at that, and sometimes we have to be more aware of those biases because I notice that millennials don't talk to me until they find out what I do, and then they want to do it. <laughs> so I'm on a lot of airplanes, and I don't get that eye contact. I don't get it. So there's a, it's a two-way street where we all have biases. Compassion's an interesting word. Compassion doesn't really mean, oh yeah, I get you. Oh, I feel for you. Mm -mm. Compassion means caring enough about somebody to tell them the truth and to help them. Tell them the truth and to help them. You know what? The way you did this report, it's not quite up to our style. I see where you're going, but I'm going to help you with it. I'm going to take a few minutes and I'm going to help you. Compassion is that extra step. Not having compassion, you're doing great. You're doing great. No, 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 don't worry. You're, you're doing okay. Yeah, you're doing fine. And you fire them. There's a big difference. So it takes courage, it takes time to help people, to guide people, to look for the talent and to be that mentor and to grow them. These are all pieces that work when we're talking about millennials and we're gonna be talking about Gen Z. But when you're talking to me, a baby boomer, because I learn more from millennials than any other generation, because I'm pretty good now. I'm pretty big deal on Twitter. <laughs>this is a healthcare the patients changing so we have to really understand the um, the emotions and the perspective of each generation as we care for them as we care for our patients and give them that respect and also as we build the culture of our new our hospital or our team so it's more than just learning about oh you're a baby boomer and you're a gen x and you're it's about understanding what they brought into the workplace understanding how they're changing the workplace and where it's going because i do believe that when we look at this next generation, which we call Gen Z, they are going to be different. And they're gonna be different because they were born with technology. So we have to really listen and we have to give them a lot of encouragement. How many of you have great intentions to get to the Y, to get to the gym, to get to wherever you go, but there's a voice inside of you that says what? Don't go. If it's raining, what does the voice say? Oh. Don't go, it's raining, right? Isn't it interesting that every change we want to make, no matter, you want to get up early. I'm going to start getting up at five in the morning so I can journal, okay? The alarm goes off at five on my phone, and what do I say? Not today. The, oh, sleep in, right? Isn't it interesting that we have a voice inside of us that is against all the changes? This is true with everyone. So I want you to hear that voice because look at, if you hear that voice, raise your hand. Look around. We all hear that voice. It's so weird. No matter what change you want to do, that voice is going to say, not today. Don't go. It's raining. Oh, it's too cold. Oh, you don't need to. So I want you to fight that voice in your head because we all have them when we begin to change these behaviors. Because the path to change is through a thousand little guesses. If I didn't remember anything from this, I would hope you would remember this. The path to change is through a thousand little yeses.
little yeses. Yes, I can meditate for a minute. Yes, I can walk Wally around the block. Yes, I can do this for a short amount of time. Once it becomes a habit, we stay with it a lot longer. In the beginning, we have to say the path to change is through a thousand little yeses.